Greetings, Blazely Dragon here, and I have a video response for you. A lot of people seem to like them, so I'm going to try to do more if I can. This video response is to uh, Zimmer one. Might be mispronouncing that. It has an R in front of it, uh, so yeah, looks like Zimmer one. I'm trying to do the R in front of it. So if I'm mispronouncing your name, I do apologize. I tend to do that a lot. Some of the names are very unique. So this is actually a novel. So let's break this down piece by piece. Questions. So what is a witch? Can they be male or female? What a witch is is very easy to sum up. A witch is a magical practitioner who practices the art or craft of witchcraft. Now, ask me what witchcraft is might be a little bit longer explanation there. Yes, it's a male or female turn. It is universal. There are some that are witches, and the males might consider themselves wizards. I'll get into different names and paths in a later video. Let's stick directly with your questions for now. There are some, especially in the Scottish tradition, that consider the males to be warlocks. Now, there are other traditions and I myself personally believe, warlock is derivative of a word which means oathbreaker in Old English. So a warlock was someone who broke their oaths. Uh, witches would take oaths within their coven. Each coven had their own sets of moralities and traditions and oaths that you would swear. So if you joined a coven and you swore these oaths, and then you broke them and broke away from the coven, you were considered a warlock. That is an insult, male or female. A warlock is an oath breaker, and it's negative. Like I said, depends on your tradition. I know some of you might be arguing. Some of you are males, consider yourself a warlock. Depends on your tradition. But yes, to stick with your question, a witch is a unisexual term for a male or a female. Practitioner of witchcraft. What is a wizard compared to a warlock, and can they be male or female? Aha! Half answered that. I've never heard the term wizard used for a female. The term wizard usually refers to a male. Now, wizard's a tricky one. Uh, wizard is a practitioner of wizardry. Wizardry is usually associated with a magical practice. Uh, wizard itself is a semi-generic term that is associated with a wise, learned, magical practitioner. Sometimes it's a higher title of magician. Uh, sometimes it's a male term for a witch. Sometimes a wizard is just someone who's very adapt or wise or clever in a particular art. You can be a wizard on a computer or a whiz as a shortened version of it. So, wizard's kind of a very generic term. It is used a lot today in fantasy novels, role-playing games, etc. Wizards kind of uh, died out. There are some arguments that wizard was never used in the past for anyone, but kind of the whole fantasy. It just depends on where you read and what you research. But to my knowledge, wizard was used for those that practiced wizardry, which was a type of discipline of magic, which was an elevated level of magician or mage. Warlock. I kind of explained that before with the whole oath, oath breaker thing. Like I said, sometimes in the Scottish tradition, that's what they considered a male witch. So, I mean, it's kind of up there. Uh, there are There's actually a uh, Norse word, uh, volocker, might be butchering it. My uh, <laughs> Icelandic is very, very rusty. I'm not very fluid with it, so... However the word said, uh, it actually has to do with someone who binds spells. So it's kind of a spellbinder person. So they think that might be one of the origins of the word warlock, meaning just a magical practitioner in general. It just, like I said, it depends on where you read. There's a lot of interpretations of these titles. I hear some people mention the underworld. Is that another word for hell? No. And the reason I say no is because if somebody refers to the Abyss, or the Underworld, or just the other realms in general, or Hell, they're usually talking about something that's in regards to their specific tradition. When somebody says Hell, and even Hell has multiple meanings, they're usually a monotheistic Christian faith that's referring to a spot where demons and Satan spawn, etc. are banished to by God. 
Uh, there are others who consider hell to just be out of the light of God. Whereas the underworld, you have uh, kind of a mixed meaning there as well. Uh, there are those who view it as the darker world, the, the other side. This darker world can sometimes exist parallel to ours, where you step between the worlds. You might hear the veil is thinnest during uh, Samhain and Yule, and that has to do Samhain and Yule. Samhain and Beltane, I apologize. So there's kind of a thin veil between the worlds. So sometimes there's the other world, the out world, the underworld. Uh, sometimes it is considered to be the nocturnal darkness. Now, when I say darkness, darkness isn't evil. And I'll get into that at a later video or if you ask about that specifically in this one. So the underworld, like I said, is just kind of one term that might be similar to another faith's hell, kind of like the abyss or Hades, but it's not necessarily the exact same thing, if that makes sense. It doesn't translate over, in my opinion, very fluidly. Like that fluidly? Haha. <laughs> because Hades, river sticks, never mind. Uh, <laughs> I'm making a joke that I don't even understand. If you choose a path that feels right to you, even though you do pick and choose on what feels right to you, what do you tell a person that asks what you are? What do you tell them? Kind of confusing what you're asking there. If I'm reading this correctly, you're asking if you choose a path where you're picking and choosing, what do you tell people what you are? That is one of the biggest questions I have, and that's why so many people are looking for titles, or they'll look for something that they know very, very, very well, uh, such as Wicca, and then they'll assume, oh, I have to call myself, you know, a Wiccan, or I have to call myself a witch because everybody's heard of that. And that's not really the case. To me, I guess it depends on the person. I just call myself me. My, I'm the one second path guy, you know? I change every second. I'm reevaluating, learning new things. Uh, call yourself a seeker. Call yourself uh, an awakened one. Call yourself uh, a student. Call yourself an eclectic. An eclectic, or an eclectic, depending on how you want to say it. Ha, huh, that's kind of fun. It's a tongue twister. Eclectic. Is basically kind of mix and match. Choose what you like. And it's not just religion. You can have an eclectic taste in music, an eclectic taste in clothing, an eclectic taste in video games. An eclectic can be anything. So it's kind of a cop-out in a way, but I don't think we need to limit ourselves today, you know? We're, we're, not, we're not stuck in one society or one tribe where there's a specific name for the magical priestly kind of people. So I would just tell them you're you or none of your business. Uh, that's my recommendation. Let's see. Some things I see while looking down right scares me, so I stay away from that and go with what makes me feel comfortable. Is that okay? Yes and no. The reason I say yes and no, if you are in a path that you are choosing and picking that is perfectly acceptable, you want to stay comfortable. You don't want to go into areas that you are uncomfortable with. On the flip side of that, the reason I say no if you are training in a specific, specific, a lot of people pick on me because I never say that right, because there's specific and specific. Uh, if you're training in a specific type of practice, there are like levels to elevate to learn more from your teacher. And in that regards, you want to stick with it. Even if you're afraid, that's part of that developmental path. If you are picking and choosing, do with what you're comfortable with. Okay, so I mean, it just depends on what path you're going for. I mean, if you're following a direct ladder, yeah, you've got to step on every rung, even if you're afraid. Uh, consult your teacher, instructor, or tutor about that. But if you're picking and choosing, that's why I'm so big on saying, be yourself. Pick anything, mix and match it. You know, what works for you. Because we are not limited to one path. It's when you limit yourself to one path that you have to start asking those kinds of questions. Watching a lot of videos and reading various books and chanting, I do see many differences, and to me, some is good, but some is bad. I never judge that person and just tell them that is not the path I choose, but each must go with what feels right for you. Very good. I agree with that. But I get some people who get very angry and really mean because I choose something they may not believe, or they say you can't believe this, and not that as you have set rules. I tell them... The only rules are those you choose to believe and that feels right to you at your core. This is true. Then they would yell some more. 
I am a wannabe and will never get anywhere by choosing a path that picks and chooses what he or she believes. You're going to find fanatics. Uh, there's going to be a lot of people out there that will get very angry that you just pick a piece and run off with it. But if you're, if you're not like claiming it as a specific path, um, I don't want to pick on any religions, but recently I've done a lot of videos on Wicca, and I have noticed that there has been some of the newer Wiccans that will just learn from a book, and they will try to claim things of other paths. Well, this is a Wiccan this, this is a Wiccan that. Because they're not, they're not sure and they're not familiar. That can be very frustrating for someone who is trained and raised in Wicca. Uh, same thing can apply to you know any sort of path discipline or training. People get very possessive over what, what is theirs for their path. I mean, that can go to anything, you know, that can go to, to music, you know, if you have a type of bridge or music sequence, it's probably a bad example because I don't know much about music, but people do get very possessive. I wouldn't let that get to you. Ultimately, your path is for you, for your own self, growth and development. If it works, it works. You know, if you're able to learn a little bit about it, you're going to interpret it your own way anyway. So I would keep going for it. I wouldn't let that get you down personally. You know, it's some of them, like I said, they're going to be set in their path, and a lot of them are going to browbeat you. This is how it has to be. This is the way it is. If you're not following that specific path, you'll be fine. And it also depends on what you're going for. For them to sit here and say that you're never going to get anywhere. I'm perfectly happy in my path, you know, and I've been walking it for over 17 years. I pick and choose. I always have, and I always will. And that's why I make that comment about the one-second path reevaluating all the time. There's so much out there. Why limit yourself at all? You can still grow and develop by picking and choosing. Yeah, maybe you want to stick with one more than the other so you can climb and, and you know, evolve or whatever, get up to a higher ranking. Sure, go for it. But, I mean, if not, you can live a perfectly content and full life just being and taking pieces here and there. You know, the Taoists teach us the state of Pu. Pu is the natural state of naturalness. It's, it's like a log sitting uncut out in the forest. It just is. It doesn't try, it doesn't push, pull, take anything. It just is. And you get to the state of Pu through Wei Wu Wei. Wei Wu Wei is action through inaction. You just be. So you don't necessarily have to seek out to climb up. You can just simply be, and then you're part of the universe. You're part of all things. You find this equilibrium and balance. See, now I'm going to talk too much about Taoism. So, uh, yeah, don't let that get to you. Follow your heart. Follow your instincts. I tell them, well... What about Catholics or all the other religions that believe different things and those who are non-denominational or spiritual? They all choose what is right for them and who is to what is right or wrong. That is very true, actually. And it's not just in you know non-denominational. You'll find it even among uh, Druids, uh, Hindus, Taoists, Buddhists, every faith out there. You know, even if it's a magical path like witchcraft, you know, or even if it's like a magical path, like if you're talking about psychic skills or if you're talking about majory, you know, wizardry, sorcery, any of these, mysticism, each individual is going to have their own interpretation. People are going to interpret. You can't have the same path for every person. Even if you were trained specifically as a druid, one druid will have a completely different interpretation and idea of what druidry is versus another. That's fine. So even within the same path, you're going to have some arguments here and there. Sure, maybe some of the main rules or theories that binds them together, they're going to agree on. But even that, I mean, you mentioned Catholics. Look at the Bible. Look at how much Catholics argue which version of the Bible is better. You shouldn't be arguing. You should be embracing each other and learning together. You know, same thing goes for Wicca, the Wiccan Reed. Do you know how many? Do you know how many interpretations and versions there are of the Wiccan Reed? Take the uh, the main main purpose behind the Wiccan Reed, and ye harm none, do as ye will. Everyone knows that line who's Wiccan or has studied Wicca. Anyone who's looked at the Reed. What does harm none mean? What are we talking is harm? What is considered harm? What's not considered harm? Honestly, consider that. 
a lot of people are going to have different interpretations with it, and that's fine. I mean, people are going to try to tell you what's right and wrong all the time. That's just human nature. Everyone thinks their path is the best. Everyone thinks they know better than anyone else. That's just, it's going to happen. But like I was saying, you can't have every single person following the same path. Even if they're following, even if they're all druids, you know, even if they're all witches, they're going to have different interpretations. It's going to be their personal version of druidry or witchcraft. And that's good. That's fine. So I encourage you to continue doing what you're doing. Do what feels right. Don't listen to other people when they try to tell you what's right or wrong. If you're not specifically following an exact path from a teacher or a tutor, mix and match all you want. Learn where you can and just be you, you know? Don't let them get you down. So that's my interpretation and opinion. Uh, if, if this answered all your questions, awesome. Yeah, awesome. I can't talk. And if it didn't, please feel free to ask more. You know, video response, other messages, whatever you want. And if other people have questions, go ahead and ask, and I'll get to them when I can. So hopefully you enjoyed. Lazy Dragon out. Enjoy, and blessings to you.